everybody. Oh, it's so cold here. We woke to our first frost of the year. Our cars were covered with frost. Oh, the windows had frost on them. The driveway and the um, porch were a little slick. Oh, brr, it's cold. So this sweet little man here, I'm going to give him a little change because he's in shorts. Little Haley Andrea, bless him. I actually had set up to do a video on Friday. Um, I was going to plan to change Haley Andrea and Zolani. Zolani's here in the pram, so I'll swap them out after I change him. Um, my plan was after my husband came and went for lunch, I would make a video. However, he came home and he stayed for a couple hours. He wasn't feeling well. And he was literally gone for maybe half an hour, a little longer. Uh, he just wasn't feeling well. So he came home and stayed home all weekend. He's feeling much better today, thank the good Lord. Um, so now I'm making my video. I have my housework done. My laundry's going. I am not running errands today. I had made a mental plan yesterday that I would run my errands on Tuesday. Uh, and I'm really happy I did because it's so cold out. But anyway, before I start, I am going to, as I said, change these couple babies. I also want to participate in Renee's tag. Um, she did it a a couple weeks ago now. I think I watched it a week or so ago. Um, and I believe the title was 10, 10 Things I Like Besides Reborn Dolls or Dolls. If memory serves in the video, she just says dolls. So since y'all know I love dolls in general, reborns and other, so that'll all encapsulate in that. So that will not, I won't talk about other dolls either because I believe it's just dolls in general. Oh, I'm hoping my memory is serving me correctly. I watched it a while ago. Anyway, um, but I want to participate in that. Anyway, Renee's channel is Random Reborns, and I will put a link down below to her original tag of this video. So I'll do a little catching up quickly as I'm changing and then I will go over to do the tag. Not go over, I'm going to do it in this video, but I will go on to that, but I'll do a little catch up first. So anyway, um, we had a, um, my husband, as I said, wasn't feeling well over the weekend. So we had kind of a lazy lay in, stay in our pajamas all weekend kind of weekend, which you know, I think we both needed him more than I because he wasn't feeling well, but um, it was a very lovely restorative weekend for sure. Um, I'm taking Haley out of this little all-in-one short romper that was gray that had little bright green frogs all over it. A little short outfit. There he is in his Kimberly's cocoon onesie. Um, and I'm, what I'm going to change them into is also an all-in-one, um, it's a, oh, I should have brought some socks over. Oh, little me, and I'll get you some socks later. Oh, or did I? Did I think that? No. I'll get him some socks later. His drawer is on the, over on the other side of my studio, so I can't get it right now. Um, anyway, this is a long pants all-in-one. Who is this by? This is by Yoga Sprout, and it's, uh, white with navy blue stripes, and the border on the collar and the, is it the wrist too? Yeah, the wrists and the ankles is a green color. Kind of a, not really sage green, but a green color. And then on the chest is a little, um, a gray profile of a polar bear. And it's embroidered on with gray thread. And then it says, strong, tough little guy in navy blue thread with a little like a green lasso under the word little. So we'll put this on him. He'll be a little snugger in this. Um, so anyway, do y'all remember I told you about that series we loved called Fauda? Well, I found another one this weekend. <gasps> it's so good. It's called Hostages. Um, it's an Israeli um, series. Um, so it is in Hebrew. Um, but it is so well done. So, so well done. I often wonder about the minds of people who create these shows that are so captivating. Um, but anyway, so we've been watching that. I think we have a couple more episodes, two or three more to go. Oh, there's a tail. Oh, I tucked that in, I guess, for his photo shoot. Um, so, I might have to clip that off. You don't want to lay here like your mini pearl now, do you? We'll see. I might, have, I might be able to hide it when I 
put him in the, he's going to go back in the pram while I change Miss Solani, because she'll go back out where I paint. Um, so yeah, uh, let's see. So last week, what was going on last week? Um, cause I never did, I did make, um, little, uh, Maya's box packing video. And I think that's all I made last week cause I did intend to do this on Friday. Uh, but it has been, we had two days of Indian summer about a week ago, and then it kind of took a drastic drop in temperatures where we were in the, in the fifties, then the forties this morning, it was 39. Um, I, the other day it was pouring, pouring rain and it was just about 40. And I thought, oh, if it were just a handful of degrees colder, this would be snow. And I know some of our friends like Brenda in Canada have snow. Oh, I know it's coming. Uh, when I did my chores on Fridays, Friday, I'll be honest, ladies, I brought my shovel. I brought our shovel in. I did. Uh, we keep it in the garage during the non-winter months, but because the there's a little bit of a, you know, we have to go out on the, the porch and down some steps to get to the garage, I just, it makes more sense to me to keep it inside the back door. Look how beautiful he is. Oh, come here, little snuggly buggly. Are you cozier now? Yes, I bet you are. Um, I like to keep it inside so that in the, oh, she's a heavy one, in the event of snow, you know, we're not traipsing out through the snow to get to the shovel. So, plus I also was like, oh, if I bring it in, you know, maybe it'll ward the snow off a little bit. <laughs> you know that when you take your umbrella out with you, it doesn't rain, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so we'll see how, uh, how long it takes before we get snow. I did look up the temperature this morning because I wanted to see if they were predicting snow. And for the next week, I didn't see any snow on the forecast. I saw some rain, I believe it was Friday. So, um, but like I said, we had two days of Indian summer. It was absolutely glorious. Um, it was like in the, the high 60s, low 70s, very balmy out. Oh, it was just glorious. Um, so I really enjoyed those couple days. Um, and the leaves are all turning. It's just so, so beautiful out. Um, I'm just trying to position Haley here. I don't know if I'm going to be able to hide that tag. Let me shove it under the pillow. There we go. All right. Now, let's, this Miss Zolani here, I'm going to change her into this beautiful dress that, um, Amanda sent her. Amanda over at Little Reborn Princess. Let me see. Yeah, her head's cut off. I had a feeling it was because she's so much taller. Let's see if I shimmy her down a tad, if that helps a little. I really hate, oops, sorry. I really hate moving y'all on the tripod, but there we go. I'll show y'all Haley in a bit. All right. So I'm going to change her into this beautiful dress uh, that Amanda sent her. It I'm, it says, I had to look on here at the fabric. It says it's poly and spandex. I can't describe it. feels so amazing, though. Um, and it is a gray dress, short-sleeved. Uh, she does have three-quarter limbs, but I think this should be enough. We'll see. Um, and then it has um, big flowers all over it in bright yellow and a really deep, like, eggplant color. Um, aubergine, I suppose. And... Um, a teal blue and a darker blue and then at the waist there's a bow of the same fabric and it buttons down the back and then I'm gonna put on some white cable knit tights and I have some little um, black velvet shoes uh, right here I think these will fit her we'll see they're little black velvet shoes that have three black rosettes at the toe a little strap across the top of her foot we'll see um, so yeah, so we've really, we've really had a, oh, she's got on a, <laughs> a gray onesie. That was what she wore under her, uh, her, um, her Glinda outfit from the Kansas Doll Show, which by the way, the Kansas Doll Show is quite the success. They have already sold out the floor for next year. Um, I believe last night was the night they were, they have 25 um, tickets 
that are like an early bird ticket for the first day for the Saturday and it comes with a goodie bag. I did not get that. Um, I've already signed up for a class and um, I'm planning to attend. I'm not vending, but I'm planning to attend. But, you know, you never know. Best laid plans. You know, we, we're, we're very transient people over here. <laughs> So if, if I end up not being in a reasonable distance, I would end up having to forfeit that. But I didn't want to miss out because everything was selling out so quickly. Um, the classes, and like I said, the floor is already show, sold out. They, are taught, they already said they're going to have to find a new venue for, for the following year, 2020, because you know they've already outgrown this one. So unless this particular hotel expands in some way, like their convention-type area... Um, they're going to have to find. And it's kind of a bummer because I didn't fly. We drove in. But literally the airport is right across the street. Um, so it was really convenient for those who flew in and you know could just take the hotel shuttle. You could probably even walk. Um, I, I'm not 100% sure about that because I'm not sure where arrivals were compared to what I could see like the parking lot in the front of the building. Um, you know, from the parking lot of the hotel. So it's, it was very, you know, great proximity for those who flew in. Um, but anyway, I don't know how I got off on that tangent. The musings of Kimberly, huh? Um, if you're new to my channel and don't know, I talk a lot, so go get yourself a cup of coffee or tea or a snack or a meal or something. Uh, those of you who have been here for a while know how I can be. Uh, but I'm sure you see at the beginning the time of this video, so I think that's how you can determine if you want to watch or not. So I just ramble. It's like a box opening. You only get to do it once, and I only get the opportunity to make this video this one time. And if it's too long for some people, they can choose not to watch. Okay, let's button you up. Oh, I think it's fitting her perfectly, Amanda. Um... But let me move on to the tag before um, I completely forget to do it. <laughs> um, so, 10 things I like besides dolls. Oh, my word. They're not going to be in any particular order because um, I'm sure I could probably list hundreds of things that in this life I love besides reborn dolls. And life is probably a great place to start. I love life. Um... You know, we're all given one chance around this earth, around this globe, or whatever you want to say, on, on earth. And I really try to embrace every second of every day. The good, the bad, the ugly, the happy, the sad. Everything that I have gone through in my journey on earth has got me to where I am today. Um, you know, people often muse, you know, if I could change, you know, yeah, you know, we'd probably all want to change some things, but then I would not be who I am right now if I change things. So I just embrace what is, and I love life. Life is a gift, um, but I think she used the word like. I'm switching it to love. Sorry, Renee, I do kind of usually have my own take on tags, but I'll do my best. Um almost don't want to touch her hair. I love her crazy curls. Um, look how beautiful she is, y'all. I'll give her a little zhuzh, though. Um, so anyway, I, um, life, life, I just love life. Um, that's, I'll, that's, I'll leave, I could, uh, that could be my whole topic right there, because that would probably encapsulate everything, so, Okay, let's see. What else can I say that I love? Travel. Absolutely, travel has got to be high up on my list. Um, travel, to me, is one of the most amazing things in life that I love. I love to go to other places, meet other people, see how much we're alike and different cultures fascinate me. Um, you know, I've been blessed to have seen a lot of this earth. Um, there's so much I have not seen and I would love to see, you know, before my time is up. Um, but I'm content with where I've been that if I never travel again, um, I'm okay. Um, 
travel is so so important to me. I have I have loved traveling. Um, if I'm repetitive to those of you who've been around for a while, I'm going to try to you know phrase things a little differently. But I went on my first missions trip at the age of 14 with my church. I don't know if I've ever shared that story. Um, however, I that was it for me. You know, we didn't travel a ton. We did, you know, we mainly drove. Um, as you all know, my grandparents were farmers in Indiana, and we lived in Illinois. And so we, you know, would go there. We've been to, you know, we'd go to Michigan and all the places kind of local, Wisconsin, places you could drive. Um, after my parents divorced, we took one trip. Um, my mom took us to Florida because she from the sale of the house because she determined we would probably never go on another vacation again and she was right we didn't that was the only like proper go on an airplane vacation we ever took and um, and while I loved it it wasn't till that trip at 14 where I caught the bug where I thought oh I got to do this a lot in my life um, so travel for me is really, really something that I love, love, love to do. I think it expands me as a human being. I think it makes me more compassionate. It makes me more caring. Um, I'm not somebody, I do like to do touristy things where you see things that tourists do, but I also like to kind of go off the beaten path and get lost. It's one of my favorite things to do is get lost in other countries. I know a lot of people kind of think, oh my word, why would you purposely get lost? Um, but then I, I then talk to locals and ask them, you know, how do I find this and where do you eat and where do you shop? And that's how, to me, you understand a culture is by getting into the day-to-day -day with the actual locals. Uh, before I kind of tour you all around, I have to tell you something because travel made me think of it. This sweet baby boy here, he is the Michaela sculpt by Sheila Mrafoka and he became as I was calling him Mick. His mommy has given me permission to tell y'all his name. I'm going to try to do this and not get emotional. She had no idea when she sent me this message. Um, to my knowledge she did not know. Uh, she has named him Gabriel and for those of you who have been with my channel you know for over the past couple of years know about Gabriel in Ethiopia and I will actually link the video about Gabriel to the end of this video at the end you know you can click on it's like suggestions to watch or something for those of you who don't know about my Gabriel um, I, I literally read her message and had tears in my eyes she is spelling it differently I believe she's spelling it G A B R E L L E I'm not sure if I have that correct or not but she's spelling it different than Gabriel but I don't care it's the name and oh my word I just talk about a joy bubble so this little man is Gabriel here and I just oh when she told me that y'all you have no idea it just was such it was really an emotional email for me um, and it in her message and it was just so so endearing so this is sweet Gabriel so um, again I will put that video at the end and that's you know another one of my travel stories um, I have hundreds of travel stories, uh, but I do travel is huge for me. So, okay, let's see what else. I guess I'll, I'll show you what I did. I did this on Saturday. Um, I decided to change a couple things around. One of which, if you look down here on the floor now, I have both Moses baskets. So we have the Moses basket on the stand that has Juliet and Abigail in it. And then directly now coming, sticking out in the same position from it um, is the basket that the Zara kit is inside of. And she used to lay um, in front of the Queen's round bassinet, but now she's down on the floor there. And then Malachi is up in the Moses basket that's on a stand, and then sticking out from him is this Moses basket that has, I believe that's Evangeline and Sophia Grace kits and that used to sit up on my counter but here's what I did over here um, I was just rearranging some things on Saturday and decided I wanted my scale somewhere where it's more accessible I had it out on my photo prop shelf 
And so every time I wanted to weigh a baby, I had to pull it in and out. And I thought, you know, all that movement can't be good. I don't want to mess with the, the calibration of the scale and have to try to correct it. So um, for now, I decided to put it here. I don't know if it'll stay here. And I thought, oh, let me bring out all my other little... All I actually just acquired a few more um, vintage bottles. They, they arrived actually on Friday, which kind of is what encouraged me to do this. So the next thing I'm going to say that I like is antiques. I love, love, love antiques. I love going antique shopping. I love, that is one place that window shopping is not annoying to me, is walking through antique malls and going to antique um, auctions and play, oh, I love antiques. Um, so I think that's my number two, right? Oh, no, three, life, travel, and antiques. I'm on three, Renee. I'm going to try to keep track. Um, so I had ordered, um, I had won in an auction. It was a set of five bottles, which was this one back here. One, two, three, four, and this one back here, five. Um, and so I thought, oh, let me bring out all my bottles. So this one I need to find a replacement nipple for. Um, this is an old glass, who is it? Oh, it just says ounces, eight ounce bottle. This is actually an old Heinz juice bottle. Um, I believe people used to just take the lid off and screw a nipple on. Um, I don't have, I just have the lid. And this is an old Heinz baby food jar. Doesn't have the label, unfortunately. This little even flow, it says even flow best for baby. This tiny little glass, is it even in ounces? I mean, it's marked like it's eight ounces, but it's not. It's very tiny. This was the doll bottle I used to feed Mary Elizabeth with. I used to fill it with water. Sadly, the nipple has, has gotten, it eventually fell off, and I don't know, it must have maybe fell off like when we were moving, and it got lost in a box. I don't know where the nipple is, but there's that. And then I have this other little doll bottle, this little vintage doll bottle. Again, the nipples, they're rubber, so they go really hard over time. So I put some of my vintage little rattles here. Uh, this is an old vintage Vaseline jar. I can't remember if I got this from my grandma's or not when she passed away. I'm, I think I did. Um, and then I love this little even flow. This is a even flow. This is a four ounce glass bottle, um, but this one has a really tiny nipple compared to that one. Um, and like I said, I just got these on Friday. And then this one I got on Friday. And she said that she had replaced the nipples. I did message her to ask where she acquired them. And she said that she just had them um, from other bottles. Because I really would like to get one for that. So I need to do a little research. But um, I love this bottle. And I already had one that has the original nipple. But it is, this one is, this is the one I used to put in with when I would take photos in that little uh, pram, but it's starting to wear there. I used to open it and put a little uh, downy in there, but I can't get it off anymore. Thank goodness that happened when it was empty. Um, so that has to be left alone now. And I love the shape of this one. This one is kind of reminds me of the old medicine bottles, actually. Uh, this is a four ounce kind of oval shape, if you look at the bottom uh, bottle. And then there's a little vintage pair of shoes. I have my brother's shoes. My brother's shoes are up here. Those were my brother's shoes. And those were my shoes, the red ones. Um, and then I have some vintage spoons. That one's got a curly handle. This one, actually I got this one in Ship Shawana. It has the Gerber baby on, that Gerber baby head on the end of the spoon. This I need to clean up. This is an old uh, silver baby cup. And then here, this is a, I also got this at Ship Shawana, Weber's Peanut Butter, C.H.W. Weber, Cincinnati, Ohio, a little tin. Um, and then this one I already had, and this the one I got the other day. I think this is fascinating. It's still in the, it still has the, the little cardboard sleeve, Pyrex nursing bottle, can be sterilized in bo boiling water. This means protection for baby's health. Eight ounce narrow neck, 20 cents, look at that. And then it says, boil me, chill me, see if I care. It's just really funny. Now, this one has the original, as you can see, it's getting really dark, the original rubber nipple. And the one I got on Saturday still has the paper sleeve as well. And um, it has a replacement nipple. And then the other one I have back here is actually French. Um, everything's written in French. It, French. it is Pyrex. It has also the original nipple. Again, it's kind of starting to decay. 
Um, but anyway, so antiques. I love, love antiques. It doesn't just have to be baby stuff. I have antiques throughout my house and, of course, the scale. And then here's this bib. I picked this bib up to um, maybe send home with a baby, and so I've had it laying here, but I just thought it looked really cute sitting on the scale. So for now, it's going to be a decor right there. Um, so yeah, I set that up. So I love antiques very, very much. Um, antique. I love wood. Oh, I also set this here. I brought this, and this is this little Peter Rabbit set. It's a little... Um, a little mug and a little plate. I really wish that high chair had a, a little tray going across because I'd set it there. I actually brought them in because that was out in my basket with the stuff I already had in my collection to set here. But as you can see, it got a little crowded. It got to be a bit much. So um, I just set it for now on the high chair. I'm not really sure. It might go back out in the basket. Um, um, or I might look for a little high chair that has a tray so I can set it on. We'll see. So I also moved these around. The rocking chair that Raggedy Ann and Toby are on were there and the high chair was there. That is actually an antique piece, that chair. Um, this, I don't know if this is considered antique. This rocking chair that Jean Bieb is sitting on was actually my rocking chair as a little girl. I used to sit in that chair and feed Mary Elizabeth from that little bottle, y'all. Isn't that so sweet? Um, so anyway, um, so antiques. I love, love of antiques. Okay, I got seven more to go and I'm at 26 minutes. Okay, let's see. What else do I love? Um, there was something I said when I was talking about the, the antiques that made me think, ooh, that's a good one. And now I've lost it. Oh, darn. Oh, that's what I was going to say. Organizing and, you know, tidying. This. I love doing this. I love organization. Oh, you guys, the joy it brings me. The next thing I'm going to do is I think I'm going to take everything off this shelf up here and kind of go through and, and rearrange and I don't know. I just have had that feeling to do that for a couple weeks now. I just haven't had the time, but I kind of want to go through and and see what all I'm going to keep and, and how I can rearrange it and stuff. So I'll be, be on the lookout again. It might take me a few weeks to get there, but I do want to do that. Um, <clears throat> but I do love reorganizing and organization and cleaning. Oh, let's put it all together so it only counts as one. Oh, Y'all have no idea. You know, I have this incessant need to clean and organize. It is in my blood from very young I did it as a little girl. I, I used to spend every Saturday for many, many, many years. I would reorganize my bedroom every Saturday. And this was after, because it was my brother and I would go, well, my brother and I, I use that very loosely. You know, we were, we would, all of us, my mom, my brother and I would spend Saturday cleaning the house. And then my brother and I, I, I was assigned to go to the laundromat, and my brother was assigned to grocery shop. And my brother came up with this grand plan. You know, I was young. I was nine. I fell for it. I fell for it for years. He said, if I help you, because, you know, we had a little granny cart that I would, you know, the, the laundromat was about two and a half blocks away. And he's like, if I help you go get to the laundromat, and then you call me when you're done, and I can help you bring everything home, can you help me grocery shop? So then, okay. So, of course, you know, he'd walk with me to the laundromat. He'd go back home. He'd have a couple few hours. I don't know what he did. I'd call him, and he'd come back, walk with me. And then my mom would have written out the grocery list, and then we would sit down, actually, and rewrite the list in order of the store and then split the list in half. He'd take a cart and start on one end. I'd take a cart and start on the other. We'd meet in the middle. We were so organized that way. My brother is a genius, actually. Um... He really is. I mean, he's really, really, really intelligent. Um, so that's what we would do. But anyway, after all that was done, what did I do Saturday afternoon, evening? I would rearrange my bedroom. And I had a canopy bed. And so I would, ha I would have to take it apart. I didn't have a huge room. It was a rectangle room. I, if I had to guess the dimensions now, I would probably say it was maybe... <sighs> Let me think. I'm just trying to think because I had a twin bed. So I'm guessing it was probably eight, eight or nine feet long by about seven feet wide. 
I'll say, let's say seven by nine. That sounds about right. I'm just guessing. So there wasn't a lot of space to work with, and I had a, a canopy bed. So I would have to take the mattress and the box spring off. Take the, I totally disassembled my entire bed. And I would have it leaning up on the wall. And then I would rearrange the other stuff, leaving wherever I wanted to put the bed vacant. And then I would reassemble my bed. <laughs> oh my word, I, I did that for years. I had this like need. I don't know. I don't know if it was my way of during a very... I don't want to say tumultuous time, you know, my, it's, you know, I didn't have any friends whose parents were divorced. It was like, you know, it was not the norm when I was a little girl. Um, I didn't feel like my life was out of control, but at my age now, I look back and wonder, was that my way of ha creating some semblance of order in my life that was probably a little out of order? I don't know, but I did that for years, ladies. Um, so I've always had this in me to be tidy and rearrange. Um, I think I shared with you at one point when we first moved into that apartment, um, my mom just said, you know, we'd always had to keep our rooms and everything clean prior to this. But, you know, being a new single parent, it is stressful. And she was now, you know, back to work and everything. So she just said, just shut your door. And I had never had a messy room. And I thought, oh, this will be fun. You know, I've had friends. I go to their house. You can barely walk in their room. So I decided to kind of let my room go to pot. Oh, and then the, I think I've shared this before, the, I had a uh, Raggedy Ann and Andy music box that broke. It fell. It was from my grandmother. It fell and broke. And it, I actually carried that around. I, it moved for many years with us. Um, I put it into a, a brown paper, like a lunch sack, and kept it under my bed, thinking when I grow up I can fix this. Uh, and I think it was, tw I was 21 when I finally uh, realized, yeah, that's not, I mean, it was tiny little shards. There was no, no way it could be repaired. I did have since seen it in an antique shop, but I didn't buy it because to me, the, the joy was the gift from my grandmother and that wasn't, that wouldn't be the one from her. So I chose not to purchase. I was really excited when I saw it and I walked around the shop and pondered and thought, you know what? the one from my grandmother's gone. So anyway, I, um, that was it for me ever since that moment till this moment, I have never had a mess. I can't, I cannot stand it. So I don't know if that's what cemented it in me. So cleaning and organizing are a huge, huge love of my life. It, you know, I hear people talk, oh, they hate to clean. I don't love to vacuum y'all. I'll, I'll admit that. But other than that, everything else, none of it bothers me. I absolutely get so much joy from cleaning. I can't describe it. It's like a joy bubble. Okay, so that's four. Let's see. What else? Photography. Oh, I love photography, y'all. Um, I really enjoy taking photos of family and friends and, of course, my dolls and nature. Um, I really, really love photography so, so very much. Um, back when I was a nanny, oh, if I had a newborn, that first like 12 to 14 days, oh, so much fun because they're like just goo. I mean, you can like position them and I don't know, it's almost like their bones aren't working yet or something. Literally, you have 12 to 14 days where you can just like position them in all these weird little poses. <laughs> oh, I loved that. Um, it's, you know, I kind of think of it every once in a while when I am, I photograph after every bake when I'm creating a reborn and I can put them in any kind of pose that I so choose. And then sometimes I put them together and think, wow, you were so much more posable before you had your body. <laughs> oh, and it reminds me of those first couple weeks of a newborn where they're just so posable and then all of a sudden they're not. <laughs> so, um... Let's move Lucy Ray's fox a little bit so y'all can see her in her sweetie dress. Oh, so, so sweet. Um, so, yeah, photography. I love photography very, very much. Actually, um, and this is perfect. I can talk about this. Well, I could talk about it anyway, but I'm going to talk about it because um, Renee, thank you so very much. Renee was so helpful. I mentioned in a recent video that I was pondering starting a second Instagram Um for my personal collection, I have only less than five, I would say, if I went through and counted it, it's around there, I would guess, of my personal collection on my Kimberly's Cocoon Instagram because to me that Instagram is to show my art and 
while I've created most of my babies, I've not created all of my babies, so I don't share my collection. Uh, and I just didn't really, in my brain, my brain is very compartmentalized. It's alphabetical and um, it is compartmentalized. And so in my brain, I just could not make that transition to having my collection woven in with my creations, my, my art. And so because the ones I keep, of course, are here and they're, they're very, very endearing and, and I would love to showcase them, but I guess I don't do it because even though I would type out, this is my personal collection, it always happens. I get messages. Oh, I just saw the photo you posted of such and such a baby. Is it is it for sale? And so to avoid all that, I just don't really share my personal collection. And so Renee was so kind. She sent me some messages with photos and arrows and everything on how to set up my second Instagram. So Renee actually did it last night. I am at this point choosing to keep my collection Instagram private. Um, so I believe if you go follow it, I have to approve. I'm not 100% sure how that works. I, I have it on private right now because the only photo that's on there is actually, her head is just not exactly how I want it to be, y'all. Um, it's not, um, the only photo I currently have is like, I, I don't even know what it's called, but like your little account photo, the little thumbnail, maybe that's what it's called. Um, and it is of Saffron and Sapphira. And I did change my photo on Kimberly's Cocoon on my that Instagram to my Kimberly's Cocoon Butterfly because Saffron and Sapphira used to be in that space. And since they're part of my personal collection, I chose to remove them. So currently I have nothing posted. I'm trying to decide um, because I want it to be all my dolls, not just my Reborns. Um, so I'd love to put Mary Elizabeth on there. She was my first. I got her the day I was born. I've had her my entire life. Um, so she's almost 49 years old. Bless her. Um, so I and jean Viev is my oldest reborn that I've had. So I'm trying to decide if I want to start with my first doll or my first reborn. But it is going to be dedicated to all my dolls. Like I can put Nunu Silence up there. Bless her. She doesn't get much time at all. That's my nanny doll that my mom crocheted for me. Her name is Nunu Silence, which in French, Nunu is nanny. And Silence is because she has no mouth. So she's my silent nanny. She can't talk. Um, that's a little bit of my sense of humor. But these are all my childhood dolls. I'd love to, like, snap a photo of them together and, you know, put a little blurb about them. So it will be all my dolls, mainly Reborns, um, because I don't really do much with my childhood dolls. They sit on a shelf, but I would love to have them all in a, in a place together. So that, I finally, what was took so long was coming up with a name. I had several ideas, and I finally settled on it so pathetically simple. Uh, Kimberly's underscore collection because Kimberly's underscore cocoon is my Kimberly's cocoon Instagram. But what I found fascinating is I typed in Kimberly's with a capital K underscore collection with a capital C and it let me. But it never let me do that with Kimberly's cocoon and I went back and tried. I tried to edit and it still says that account is taken. So I have to look it up and see who the heck the other Kimberly's cocoon is. I didn't even think about that, but there must be another Kimberly's cocoon out there. I wonder what they're talking about. So my new Instagram is Kimberly's underscore collection. So it's Kimberly's collection. It doesn't let you put an apostrophe, which goes against my grammatically correct brain, but I tried. It always tells me I, I can't. So, um, so photography. I love, love, love photography. So that's five. Number six, nature. <gasps> I love nature. Um, I love gardening. I love birds. I love what y'all don't know how much time I waste. Now I've got Barney still out there. Y'all Fred and Wilma were vacated. They were rehomed, but Barney's out there. And let me tell y'all, Barney is getting rotund. He, and I did in my research find out that, um, uh, he will be hibernating this month. So I'm guessing he's just getting himself all nice and chubby to get through the winter. And um, he was out there, what day was it? I think it was, it was either Thursday or Friday of last week. Oh my word, it was like every time I looked out the window, he was out there eating. Um, and so I would just watch him. 
I love to stand out there, mainly at the window, because if I open the door, they, anything gets scared away. But we have all kinds of beautiful creatures. We get deer. Um, we have Barney, who is my resident um, groundhog. We have squirrels and birds and raccoons and possums. Um, we don't have chipmunks, which surprises me. This totally would be, to me, should be an area where there's chipmunks, but for whatever reason, there's not. I love chipmunks. I loved Kylie's video recently. She was showing a, a chipmunk on there. It was so cute. Um, so I love nature very much. I love going on nature walks. We live right across from a beautiful forest. I prefer walking there, though, with my husband. Um, you know, I just, you know, as women, we got to be smart and be safe, so... Um, I do occasionally walk there on my own, but I much prefer to walk with my husband through there. But it is so, so, so beautiful. Um, and you all know I love frogs, and frogs are part of nature too. So I love nature very, very, very much. Um, and right now with all the leaves changing, it is so, so beautiful. I was actually discussing this the other day with a friend, and I talked about this. So there was a tag a long time ago that it was 10 things about you or something like that. And so I just read my about me from Facebook and I mentioned it in there and it, it has fascinated me from childhood when I learned about um, how trees you know they're you know, all the green leaves and the chlorophyll and all that stuff and photosynthesis and stuff and I it made the connection in my brain at a very young age about how before the leaves fall we get to see their true colors like they're hidden because of the chlorophyll but they're always there, that beautiful yellow, and I shouldn't even say yellow, it's like a golden color, and, and the red, and the purple, and the, and the brown, all those beautiful colors. Like when you see the beautiful fall trees, and it's like, it's a masterpiece, especially when you see all these trees clumped together that have different foliage that's all different colors. It's just so magnificent to see. But they show their true colors right before they die. And I remember as a, as a, when I made that understanding in my brain, I mentally said, don't be like the trees. Don't show your true colors before you're di you die. Always be yourself. Be true to yourself, whether it's popular or not, be yourself. And I have lived by that since then. And I marvel at every year. And then you look at the trees with no leaves and what's going on under the ground so that next year those trees can burst forth with all their new leaves. Is uh, Nature just fascinates me. It, it truly, truly does. Um, so, okay, that was six, I think, right? Okay, nature. Ah, uh, let's see. Research. Oh, I'm a research freak, y'all. I love to research things, and like that Instagram, for example, had Renee not message me, which, oh, Renee, you have no idea how much I appreciate that. Um, I really would have researched it to the nth degree, y'all. You have no idea. I research so, so much um, about everything. I really, really, really do. Uh, if I am fascinated by something, I will read about it. I will watch videos about it, whatever. I love, love, love to research. Um, I never in my life want to stop being a student. I think constantly, you know, keeping our mind occupied and learning and growing and developing in any area is so, so very important. So research is a huge one for me. Um, which leads me, I guess, to number eight, which is alternative forms of, of health. Um... I, I do believe in doctors. I think doctors are very, very important, and they are very knowledgeable and can give you great information. Um, and then I come home and look up alternative methods of, of healing myself. <laughs> Y'all know I'm really into essential oils, supplements. Um, I make different, like right now, I, I a couple, probably, probably about a month, I don't know, been a few weeks, I make elderberry syrup that we drink throughout the fall and winter. Um, I make tamarind water because it's so good for you. I mean, there are all these different things that I like to do for our bodies and um, the way we eat, the way we, what we put on our body. Our skin is our largest organ, so making sure I'm not, you know, rubbing things on myself, like on my skin that go into my body that are bad for me, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, um, alternative forms of, uh, 
I don't want to say medicine because that's not the I guess it is in a way, but just alternative ways of caring for my husband and myself um, are really, really important to me. Um, and then let's see what else. I know Renee talked a lot about some shows and books and stuff. Um, I love when it comes to, to that kind of thing. I love whether it's a book or a show or a movie. I like things that um, are really in depth. I'm not a big stuff and fluff kind of person. I don't watch a lot of, of things that I, you know, when I was younger, I, I watched Friends and Mad About You and stuff. I don't watch that kind of stuff anymore. I, some of the stuff Renee mentioned, I also really love 48 Hours, um, 2020, those kind of shows. Um, did I mention at the beginning of this video, The Hostages? Yes, it's an Israeli show we're watching. Um, I love, it, 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 I love, because my husband and I were even talking about this, the mind of the person who, who writes these things fascinates me. Um, the fact that you have this storyline, but it keeps changing and it keeps, keeps you thinking and guessing. I like that. I like when I'm mentally challenged. I love psychological thrillers. I love anything that has to do with real life. Um, I enjoy the investigative discovery and the homicides, all that stuff that's real. Um, but this, this is, I don't want to give it away, but the, the basic premise, like what you would get if you watch the preview is there's a doctor and she is about to, um, perform surgery on the prime minister and the name of the show is hostages. Her family has been taken hostage, including herself. And she, it's the day before the surgery and she has been told that her, her and her family will be safe, but she has to um, during the surgery, the prime minister has to die. So that's the premise of how it starts. But let me tell you, ladies, this person has woven a tale with so many twists and turns. It is so fascinating. I will say listening to it in Hebrew, Hebrew is a harsher language. Um, I, uh, my husband is not enjoying it for that reason, which is a shame, but, um, Fauda was in Arabic and certain languages, I can pick up words very quickly. I love languages, and so I can pick things up. I, I can tell you in this show, the only thing I remember are names. Nothing has stuck in my brain. Like, there's nothing like, oh, I recognize that word from, you know, four hours ago. It, nothing is, like, sticking, which is odd, because I can pick up um, language pretty quickly. Um, so, anyway, but I love that kind of stuff. I love things that make me guess and make me think and... Um, so, am I out of numbers? Now I've lost count, y'all. Numbers. Oh, I love numbers. Y'all know my thinking numbers. Numbers are huge for me. Oh, my word, I love numbers. How could I forget numbers? <gasps> I could talk all day about numbers, um, but I won't. I'll just tell y'all I love numbers. Um, so, yeah, I guess those are, I think I've, I've, I think I've actually gone more than 10. So, I hope I have. Um, I believe I was at 8, and then I did those shows. Oh, and I'm listening to a book on CD in my car right now. I believe it's called, is it called Templar? I think it's called Templar. I love that stuff, like about the Templar and the, the Knights Templar and, um, and the Masons and all that stuff. I love that stuff. So, um, anything like that, thought provoking where there's like, um, cryptic stuff. I love cryptic quotes and solving cryptic things. I love that stuff. So, um, so hopefully I answered all that. Where am I? Oh, 48 minutes, y'all. Oh, I hope y'all made yourself some. What's so by the time I get this posted, maybe y'all have already had lunch. So have an afternoon snack or a dinner and my friends on the other side of the world, y'all can have breakfast with me. <laughs> oh my word. Anyway, thanks to everybody who stuck around and listened. Um, let me have these sweet babies send their mommies some love. Mm, the sweet Lucy Ray says, hi, mommy. And little Gabriel says, Hi, Mommy. Oh, bless those two. And then we'll have Haley Andreas send love to his mommy. I know his name, too, but I can't remember if she said I could share it. But I, I think she shares. She's on YouTube, so she likes to do a name reveal. But I do know his name. Um, so anyway, those are the babies that are waiting here. As for my uh, reborning, I am uh, rooting a baby. And that particular baby has one person on her list. So in the event that mommy 
decides to not adopt her when she's finished, she would then become a peaceful baby. Um, for those of you, I'm going to briefly do this at the end here. I know I'm already at 50 minutes, but um, I get questions many times about peaceful babies and um, recently had somebody think they were in line and I don't have a line for peaceful babies like somebody messaged me asking me how many people are are in line for this baby like well, who was it? it was Maya somebody messaged me saying how many people are ahead of me already for Maya and I said well nobody's ahead of anybody I send out the information to adopt and it's the first person who puts down the down payment or pays for the baby in full. I do not hold peaceful babies without a deposit. So um, I wanted to make that clear. So and then um, I really need to do a business update video, I think, because I do get some questions from time to time that I think I know I covered that in my video, but it must not be clear enough. Because I always send the people the link to that video and say, please watch this. And if you have any further questions, please ask them. And then they watch and then they send some questions that were answered in there. But anyway, and then I have one baby that I'm mainly painting. Uh, and she is a bigger baby. She takes two bakes. Her head and arms fit in one time and then her legs the second time. So um, I have another kit that was going to be the next one. And so when I get to a point where that baby's flashing off, and then has all her bakes and cooling. I have about an uh, 50 to 60 minutes. So when I get to that point, I am working on another kit. But that kit will, is way behind the other one I'm working on. But I just want to use my time wisely. Um, so I also have a crochet order that I'm hoping to finish in the next day or two. Um, so yeah, so that's what's been going on here with um, babies. And both of the babies I'm working on right now have... Um, lists. So the first person has been notified and they're both getting works in progress photos. Um, so that is what's going on with babies. And uh, yeah, so stay tuned for the baby I'm rooting. She's only got two sections, no, three sections of hair done at this point. Um, I did not do anything reborn related um, Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. So I'm heading over now. I'm going to swap loads of laundry because I hear it's quiet out there. And then I'm going to paint for a bit. And then after lunch, I will probably uh, work on my crochet order. I just have a little bit left of that to do. And then, um, and then I'll be rooting. So anyway, have a blessed, blessed rest of your Monday or Tuesday. And, um, or whatever day it is. Have a fabulous day or night, and remember to find your joy each and every day. Find at least one thing to be joyful about, and we are sending love from Kimberly's Cocoon. Thank you so very much for stopping by. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.